With Midjourney 5.2, we can now zoom out and then pan our images in any direction. And this is how it works. Once you have your upscaled image in Midjourney, you can go down here and there's some zoom options. You can zoom out by two, which will increase your image by 50% all the way around, essentially doubling the information within the image. Or you can come back, zoom out by 1.5, which adds half that amount around the image. So you get a smaller zoom that way. But with custom zoom, you get the option to change your prompt and also change the aspect ratio of your zoom. So if I want to, I can make this 16 to nine and it will zoom out and give me an image that is 16 to nine whilst being zoomed out. However, there's one weakness. It doesn't increase the size of your image. It actually shrinks it. So you get a smaller image in the middle. So you will have to actually stitch these together in Photoshop if you want them to actually zoom out, which I'll show you how to do later in the video. Now, as with any mid journey generation, you do get the options of the ones you want to upscale. So these are the zoom by two, the zoom by 1.5s and the 16 to nines. So you can see how you're able to sort of still choose the one you want or even re-roll if you're not happy with the result. However, you can add resolution and stitch together automatically by using pan, but it also has limitations. So I've got this image here, which we've zoomed out on. If I scroll down, I can pan left or right or up and down. Once I pan in horizontal or vertical, I can only continue to pan in that direction. So if I pan to the right and just submit or pan up, and I have remix mode on, so I highly recommend turning that on if you wanna change this prompt, but I submit, I choose the images I wanna upscale, and you'll notice I can only go left or right with the horizontal or up and down with the vertical. But I can just continually pan either way. And I can repeat this process until I get a really wide image whilst actually expanding the resolution instead of shrinking it like we would with zoom. But notice there's a problem with this image. And it's the same on the tall image, which I'll show you right now. And that is that it just continues to create the same image to fill those spaces. Because every time we pan and keep our prompt identical, it actually removes some of the reference when it pans across and tries to then add the same thing into the image. But I have a way of fixing that. What we need to do is make sure we go into settings. So slash settings. And we wanna make sure that remix mode is activated. So if it's not green, you wanna click that to activate remix mode. And now if we go back to our, one of our images. Now that I have remix mode turned on and I've already panned once, but I can pan again, I'm gonna click this button. And instead of having an intense stare from a grizzled warrior, I'm going to the right and I can see there was some embers in that off to the right. I'm gonna say some embers in the darkness. And I want that to fill the frame to the right. And say black background since it's against the black and hit submit. And now I have this result, which might be a little bit better but I can also then just re-roll. And because I have remix turned on, I can say black background, subtle embers, and I can continue to re-roll until I get something that I like. I can then continue on the left doing the same thing. And then I get this image, which I think is a little bit more representative, probably not the best image, but more relevant than the first, which actually just has a bunch of faces on it. And it's because we use remix mode in conjunction with that pan to get a better and more control over our image. Now you want to do the same with zoom. I made this image a while ago and made a short about it and it just continued to zoom out and reproduce the same face. So you do want to try the same process by adding remix mode with zoom also. Now, if you want to actually stitch your zoom together in Photoshop, I have a way of doing that also. And it's actually a little bit funny. I've actually, I've got the original zoomed in image here. I want to hit the little padlock icon to make sure that it's now a layer and not the background. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to just drag and drop or just go to file and place. So I can go to file and place, or I can just drag and drop my new image in. And that's the 1.5 zoom. And now it's a smart object. So as I resize this, it's not gonna lose any information. But even though I've done zoom 1.5, it's actually not 1.5 zoom. So I actually need to go into image canvas size I go to percent, I make it 
133.33 for my 1.5 zoom, I click OK. And now I can drag that new layer underneath the original so I get the, the close-up image on top. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to Edit, Free Transform, and at the top here in the bar, I'm gonna type in the same, I'm gonna go 133.33. And if I have this linked, it'll do it automatically over there. Otherwise you can just type it in. I click OK, or I hit Enter, or I hit the tick button. And if I turn this on or off, you'll see it's all aligned correctly. But the edges don't actually blend. This is one of the issues with the zoom as well, because it actually regenerates that image and shrinks it. You don't get perfect edges. So what you need to do is click on this top layer and mask it, and then grab your brush tool. Make sure you set a brush that is uh, around the size you wanna work with. So something that can still blur the edges, but still leave some detail close to the edge. Make sure the hardness is set to zero. Make sure you have black on the left, select the mask. Again, just check black is on the left. And then you wanna go through and just kind of soften that edge. And anywhere where there's detail I wanna keep, like this hair, I don't wanna rub that out. I kinda wanna go around that hair and make sure that the detailed hair stays in there so that way we're keeping the most detailed information in the image. And I just soften that edge and that's it. I repeat the process again if I wanna add. I'm just gonna go back to the start again for a second. Now, if I wanna work with the 200 zoom, the process is similar, but there's actually an inconsistency. So I actually still wanna turn the padlock off on this layer. I drag in my 200 zoomed image, place it on top, hit enter. And then I can go to image, canvas size. But this time with the percentage, it's actually exactly what it should be. It's 200% by 200%, click okay. I zoom out. I have my layer selected of the larger image. Once again, I drag it underneath and I go to edit, free transform. And this time we just simply type in 200% and hit enter or tick. And again, I can check it's in the same position and I can then again follow the same process of masking, getting my black brush and softening the edges. One thing you may notice is that the zoom is not always centered. These images are perfectly centered on the canvas, yet they appear in two different positions. The zoom has actually moved for some reason, despite the fact this is a perfectly centered image in the middle of the zoomed image. And I don't know why that is, but for some reason it just moves it. So you will actually have to align it. One way you can do that is by taking the smaller layer on top, bring the fill down to about 54%, and you can see the layer underneath. And if it's confusing, you can bump it up or make it less if you want to, depending on what you feel is easiest. And I can simply hold down control and move it into position. And if I zoom in, I can hold control again or command on Mac and just use the arrows on my keyboard until I think it's placed correctly. I zoom out, bring the opacity up, and now it's in the right position. So that's how you can stitch that in Photoshop if you were inclined to do that also. Remember, every time you add in a zoom, you will need to increase the size of the image in order to keep the original resolution on the centered image. And when you start getting around that 10,000 to 15 or 20,000 pixel area, Photoshop's gonna to start to perform pretty poorly if you don't have a really good computer because the image is just gonna be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So consider that when doing this. And if you wanna do something pretty extreme, you may actually have to overlay and use a video editor if you wanna get a zoom out effect like I did at the start of the video. Otherwise, that's the video for today, guys. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider giving it a like. And I've got a whole bunch of other Midjourney tutorials on my channel, so check that out. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day. I'll see you again soon.